I wanted to be a poet, but I couldn't have answered these two questions when I left my, you know, my graduate study. One, what is poetry? And two, why does humanity need poetry? Nobody had ever talked about the human purposes of poetry. And so suddenly I got a day job. I'm working 10 hours a day. I'm writing by myself at night. I'm, I, I'm drawn to poetry. You know how you can be drawn to another person. You can fall in love with somebody, but you don't understand them. You don't know what you're doing with them, perhaps even. Uh, and I was drawn to poetry and I'm trying to write, I'm trying to write better and better. And I had to figure out, well, what is poetry? What is not a poem and what is a poem and why the hell would anybody need this poem? And so that's what I ultimately wrote about poetry is enchantment. I was trying to, to answer those questions, which is, and one of the things that was key to me was to go back and read anthropology and to read anci- the ancient historical accounts, mostly in China and in Greece and in Rome uh, about poetry. And one of the things I liked was that the Latin word for poetry is Carmen, like the name Carmen. But Carmen meant four things. Carmen meant a poem, a song, a magic spell, and a prophecy. And I said, that's it. You know, uh, and that, you know, and I'd always felt that poetry and song were the same art, two sides of the same art. And suddenly you understand is that what a poem is, is an enchantment, a magic spell that brings the audience into a kind of attention and a kind of openness they don't allow themselves to have in ordinary life. And in that moment of enchantment, a transaction can happen you can say between the poet and the audience, because that's what was true in oral culture. The, the poet was right in front of you. But you can say that between the poem and the audience, a kind of transaction that would not happen elsewhere. And I mean, it's sort of the way about if you walk into a great church, like Chart Cathedral or the Cathedral at Cologne, you can imagine in the Middle Ages somebody coming in there and they come into a sacred space and they understand something can happen here that doesn't happen outside the door. That's what a, how a poem operates. And so, you know, I, in my own poetry, have tried to, in, to understand and appreciate those enchantments. What are they? Well, we all know them because they're encoded in our culture. They're hardwired in our brain and we should write with them rather than against them. This is a, sh- a short poem. Um, it's called Pity the Beautiful. Pity the beautiful, the dolls and the dishes, the babes with big daddies granting their wishes. Pity the pretty boys, the hunks and Apollos, the golden lads whom success always follows, the hotties, the knockouts, the tens out of ten, the drop-dead gorgeous, the great leading men. Pity the faded, the bloated, the blousy, the paunchy Adonis, whose luck's gone lousy. Pity the gods, no longer divine. Pity the night, the stars lose their shine.